Mark Hinnick remembers struggling with feelings of depression and anxiety from the age of 10. I felt like I didn't belong, I didn't fit in. I started thinking about suicide for the first time when I was 12 years old. Over the course of about three years, I was in and out of hospitals for increasingly dangerous suicide attempts. Then one night, his despair led him to climb on top of a bridge overpass in his hometown, determined to end his pain. I felt like I was a lost cause. As I was standing on the edge of the bridge, I remember being interrupted by this man's voice over my shoulder. He said something like, uh, you don't look like you're doing very good there. And of course I wasn't. I remember that as he talked to me, he didn't sound like a professional. He didn't sound like a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. When I let go of the railing and started to fall, it was the stranger in the light brown jacket who had grabbed me from behind and I was pulled backward. The man in the brown jacket saved Mark's life and vanished just as quickly as he had appeared. I don't even know who this guy who saved me was. I didn't even know if he was real. Now on a mission to help others, Mark became an advocate for mental health. And when he told his story in a TEDx talk, it went viral, racking up more than 6 million views. I used to beg for somebody to do something about suicide and stigma. Well, that's not acceptable anymore. So instead, I've started doing something. It went viral all around the world. And people were messaging me, saying that I was their stranger in the light brown jacket. And that was really the motivation for me to try to find that stranger. And Mark Hinnick um, has written, and I'm already crying, um, has written a memoir. It's called So-Called so Normal, which describes his search for that stranger who saved his life. And Mark joins us from Toronto, Canada. Um, Mark, man, this is this is one um, <laughs> heck of a story, I got to tell you. I, um, I was struck by in reading the differences between that kind stranger, the man in the jacket, and other people at the scene. Um, you said that there people had gathered at the barricade. One person even shouted at you to jump. That is Yeah, stunning. that's right. When I, I had climbed up over that railing, and I, I felt so alone and hopeless and helpless, like nothing would ever change for me. And uh, after that stranger in the light brown jacket and talked to me for a little bit, it started to, um, I guess, expand my my perception or my awareness of what was happening around me. And that's when I realized the police had arrived. There were these big crowds, yeah. uh, even though it was late at night on a Sunday night. Uh, and I heard this group of young men, and one of them shouted out and, and told me to jump. And it was like this reminder, this devil over my shoulder, uh, of all the reasons that I didn't want to be in the world because of these people who stand on the sidelines. You know, I tell you, there's a story in the news here in New York, an Asian American woman, 65 years old, attacked while three people looked on and didn't help. And when I read the details of your, I thought about that because you said this stranger, essentially it was a master class in how to help someone. That's what they did for you. Yeah, the guy in the light brown jacket who he was the first one to arrive. Uh, and I remember standing on about an inch, inch and a half or so of concrete, uh, looking out over this abandoned steel plant in my hometown and just feeling like that place was the only place that understood me, this mm. empty, toxic place. But when this guy stopped, even though lots of other people had driven by, um, I had already talked to so many psychiatrists and psychologists by that point. I had become what's known as a frequent flyer of the mental health system. I'd been in and out of hospital so many times. So I felt like I knew who, what all the experts sounded like. And this guy didn't sound like one of those people. He didn't sound like an expert. Well, and joining us now, the mystery man, Mike Ritchie, who's in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Welcome to the show. I got to tell you, um, as I understand it, Mike, it was the video of the TEDx talk that brought you two together. I hear that um, you were at work and someone contacted you and they said, you have to watch this guy's video. I think he's talking about you. You watched the video and? Yeah. Yeah, um, a friend of mine, he was actually my roommate at the time of the incident with Mark on the bridge, so he was well aware of the story. Um, so when he had seen the video, he sent me a link to it and said, I think this guy's talking about you. Um, so I had ducked away at work. Um, I work in a busy place, so I just I, I went to the washroom to kind of get some privacy to check out the video. Um, and as I was watching it, I'm watching this adult um, recounting everything that uh, myself and this teenage boy uh, went through on, on the bridge that night, you know, um, years prior. Um, and then seeing him um, 
what he's doing with his life. You know, I always wondered if he was okay, if he ever went back and, and finished what he tried to do on the bridge that night. Mm -hmm. And that weighed on me for years because I never knew what happened to him. Um, so seeing him not only, you know, okay, but successful and doing these great things with his life, it was um, incredibly emotional. Um, I broke down. Um, so took me a bit to get myself together and finish my shift that night, but... Uh, I bet. Yeah. I, I mean, you think about it, this, what you gave him was not just his life, but Mark now has a wife and three children. I know y'all are close and you're godfather mm -hmm. and all of these things. I mean, you, that beautiful family is the result, Mike, of you being the kind stranger everyone hopes would reach out a hand when they need to heal. Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, just, I mean, the the, uh, the world can be kind of a, especially lately, I guess you'd say this story is a, it's a dark story with a happy ending. Um, and we and we don't get that too much. So, I mean, seeing how everything turned out um, gives me some uh, hope and optimism for the future. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm glad to be part of that. Well, I'm glad that you were part of the show today, Mark. The book is just uh, amazing. It's called So called normal and i'm excited because guess what the entire virtual audience is getting a digital copy of mark's book that is brilliant a memoir and is one as he said a memoir of family depression and resilience and we love a good story that makes us feel resilient around here thank you both for joining us i appreciate you so much